Hello everyone. Hello. Welcome back. So I was thinking I've been using this program for uh, way too many years and I have my own setup and my own brushes and different brushes and all these buttons might be a bit confusing for some. So I was thinking maybe to try a new style of tutorial and just film it in real time and uh, yeah, see, see how that's working. So this is going to be an introduction tutorial and we're going to go to all of these settings and buttons and maybe show you some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. So first things first, this is my personal settings. So I will actually do something bold and go back to reset everything to default mode. So to do that, first we have to close the program. No, don't save. We're closing the program uh, and we're going to Clip Studio. This is just Clip Studio page. <laughs> okay. So in case you want to save your configurations, you go to location of materials. I, I won't click on it, but you copy the whole folder somewhere safe. In case you cannot find this folder because it's protected folder, so it might be hidden, just uh, set up your Windows configuration to be able to see hidden folders that are protected. Or you can usually find it in local C, disk C, users, or username, app data, roaming, just, just click on this one and it will take you to the exact location. So now that I have a backup of all the configurations I've done up until this point to Clip Studio, I can actually go and reset all of it. So to do that, you sh press the shift key and actually open the program. And we wait, I guess. <laughs> So because I've already pressed the shift key to reset everything, I'm going to select all and just press OK. So yes, let's go to default. This is scary. OK, so this is version 2 update. This is the latest version. So. Let's, let's just close it. Okay, so the first thing I want you to test out is to take your tablet and make some lines and see how they feel. They should feel smooth and, you know, easy to maneuver. The difference is these are the tablet lines and if I switch to the mouse, these are my mouse lines. <laughs> so in case your tablet lines look exactly like the mouse lines, then some configurations are not okay. If you're not sure, you can just go to another brush, let's say the G pen and, you know, let's try the same thing. These are lines with my tablet and it <laughs> these are lines with my mouse. So the, there is a difference between them. So let's Let's try and fix that, if you possibly have this kind of issue. So it doesn't matter what tablet you have, if you just get a tablet and plug it into your, your PC, you might be getting mouse looking lines. So you need a driver. Any sort of tablet, be it a Wacom, Xpen, Huion, each one comes with some type of driver to download it and make it work properly. So just downloading the device should already help with making the lines look better. But just in case, if you want to check on it or make some other configurations, just go to the program you're using. In my case, I have a Wacom account and I have a Cintiq, but I'm not going to use this one because I, I broke my screen. So I'm just going to use uh, my Intuos, my second backup tablet. So here you can just go to pen settings and oops okay let's just open that again a pop-up like this should appear so you can play around with this this is settings for the pen 
and uh, here you have two buttons in my case for the uh, pen I usually use right click for this you can set it to another shortcut if you want right click is usually for color picking so if I go here and just press that tiny button this is the color picking part and the second button was uh, a scroll but it's not working properly a scroll on the mouse is usually going zoom in and zoom out so because i don't have any use for this one i'm going to switch it to a keystroke and make it the spacebar so now we have a spacebar and spacebar what it does in the program you can actually move around the canvas it's it's working very slow for me it, it should be faster but yes th this is what it does okay so moving on to the settings again you can add shortcuts if you want to the buttons i don't really use them and this one is really important because sometimes you <laughs> the default tablet just goes on both monitors and it's going to be really hard to draw so just choose one of them if you have multiple monitors also the tablet area is also helpful in some cases so maybe just play around with that as well if you feel the need and the uh, other short shortcuts which i don't use so yes other settings you can do is just uh, apply the tablet to one of the programs you're using i in my case i just use it for the full monitor so this one is okay yes this this should do the trick hopefully there are not too many settings you can do here but it it should already be very helpful if you have any kind of problems of having weird lines <laughs> mouse looking lines that is my uh, second point would be just to pick a few brushes maybe just one or two and just get familiar with them and you do that by just making straight lines and see which angle you're most comfortable with so just do this pages after pages and you're going to get more confident in your work and the lines and the programs so sometimes you just need to go back to the basics and just the lines this way you will also get comfortable with the specific size of the canvas and the specific size of the brushes because sometimes if the brush is too big <laughs> it might not flow as you would want it to and if it's also too small it might be just you know not comfortable enough okay so let's delete this and i'm going to choose a new new canvas so to do that just pick new and here you have many options you have illustrations you have a webtoon you have comic, you have books, you and also animations. If you click on this small arrow, you can actually read all of them. Now I'm going for the illustrations. You also have pixel sizes here. I actually prefer going for 4K. This is my favorite size and I usually go for 300 dpi. This is good in case you want to uh, make the file smaller and you won't lose quality so yes I also forgot maybe just in case make sure you have the color picked you can actually have gray or monochrome <laughs> and if you pick one of these and choose a color I mean everything is going to be gray and just in case you don't know what to do with it just it's probably a setting of the canvas so we're going to close this one 
Okay, so now just briefly let's go through the rest of the settings and programs. It's a very complex program, so don't worry, you don't need to know all of it. Just 30% of what all the button does are, you know, will suffice to help you work with it. So now you have the canvas, you have the resolutions here, you can see all of it. If you want to save a file, just go to save or save as. If you want just to save a PNG or a PNG or a JPEG file, just go to export single layer file. Okay, uh, you have this button called time lapse, and if you record the time lapse, it will actually just turn on the time lapse. So it will actually record every line you make, but just from the one point you make to the other one. So just like this. Either way, you can make the whole drawing with the recording on activated and when you want to stop or you want to export, you just go to export and here you can see all the, well, I, I guess a speed paint of what you've done up until now. I will, I will actually turn it off just because it's going to um, take a bit of memory from the PC. So depending on what type of file and how many layers and how much time you work on it, like if you have a drawing that you're working for 48, 40 hours, it, it might become very, very slow. So you might want to turn it on or turn it off, just, just depends. But it's a nice gimmicky to have, so delete. I actually wanted to go to preferences and the, there are a lot of tools I'm not quite familiar with. I think there are um, settings for tablet and iPad and mobiles and other <laughs> type of interfaces. I actually just want to go to file and just enable canvas recovery. This is going to help if by any chance you have some kind of crash, it will just automatically save whatever you're doing on the canvas. So I usually go for like, I guess, auto save every five minutes. And here, if it's not um, activated, <laughs> just activate the saving files as a background process. Here, the program Clip Studio actually saves different files in different intervals of what you're working. So even if by any chance you're losing this file, you can probably click here and just go and find actually a backup. I actually found some backup files from back to 2019. So that was quite a surprise for me. And also for the interface, if you want, you can actually make it uh, smaller, default or larger. For now it's small. I actually wanted to make it larger because it's a YouTube video, so I thought it's going to help. But if I click this and click OK and close the program because I, I have to close it so the updates can work. And if I open the program again, I mean, I don't think I can work with this interface. It, it might be helpful, but I, uh, oh, it's it's a pain. The only problem I have with this one, that's why I think it's for mobile or tablet. It's because even if the interface is large like this, the writing is very small. So I still think it's hard to read. So either way, let's go back to, uh, especially the menu, I feel like it's more or less the same. Going back to preferences and um, well, let's try default now. Let's let's see if that one is better. Is this better? I don't know. Uh, I feel like the writing is still small, so I'm gonna go to small and uh, I'll, I'll just leave it like that. Okay. <laughs> Last one, I promise. <laughs> okay. And just... Oh, no, 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 no. Let's open recent file. Okay. Good. 
Okay, so one last thing about the file menu. Uh, in case you don't know the shortcuts or settings for some keys, you can just check them out here. So you have the usual Ctrl Z, Ctrl E for undo, redo, and you can change any one of them if you want to. So I sometimes check them out, but other times I, well, <laughs> it, it's not quite problematic if you don't remember them. Let's let's just go with that. Okay, so the file options were the most easiest one. Let's go to the rest of the program and see what we can find. So I'm sure you noticed by now we have a lot of buttons everywhere and you might think they do something different. However, most of them just repeat the same action. So for example, we have the navigator here. And if you click on it, you can actually move around the canvas. The navigator is just a preview of what you're working on. But if you go on the other side of the screen, you have this tiny hand and you also do the same thing. So we're actually going to zigzag the whole screen now, just going through the same items, I guess. We also have the zoom here, which is the shortcut that is slash, it's just for the button. So if I press slash, I'm just going to reach the button. However, if you want to zoom in and out, you can actually do it just by clicking here. Or you can use the short keys, which are control minus and control plus. plus. <laughs> or you can go here. Or you can go down here, which is the same thing. The same with the rotation, you can use it from here or from here, or by pressing R, I think, and moving around. If you want to go back to the default position, just reset it by pressing here. Another thing you can play around with are these two buttons. So basically, let's, um, let's make a quick layer bit, quick, quick. <laughs> make something here if you want to just see how it looks by flipping the canvas you can just do this or do this however this will not change the actual canvas so this is just a preview so if you continue to work like this and you forgot you have uh, disactivated when you save it it's actually going to go back to the original form so just be mindful about that however it, it's really good for previewing and seeing possible mistakes. Okay, let's just delete this one. Okay, uh, all of these, you can actually find it in the view part. So in case you need them, you can just go up here and just check them. <laughs> okay. Now the program is meant to adapt many different workflows and work styles. So because of that it's also very customizable however i think there are some tools that you would use more often and some tools that you would lose use maybe less so for example down here we have the animations and it's useful if you want to do animation in this case because we're just working on an illustration we don't really need this one so just if you don't want it in the workspace just drag it out and you can actually close close it the same with this part and now we have a bit more space here and if by any chance you want to get them back you just go to window and just remember the name of the the window <laughs> and you can just drag it back down the same with all sides view just place it back so now we have it the same way it was before and this is available if you want to do anything else. For example, I don't want the navigator up here, so I just drag it out and maybe just, just place it here in the middle. Or I don't want it here and maybe I place it here or maybe I place it here and I have it larger. However, let's go back to how it was before. And this is the same if you want maybe to read your brushes or this one or 
it, it's also available if you want to place them somewhere else. So I guess just play around and see how what the workflow is best for you. But the program is very customizable, so it, it can be fun. And again, if you lose something and you want it back, just search it here in Windows, you might find it. For example, history, it's, it, it doesn't have a, an OK sign on it, but it's actually here. So if I click it here and go back, I can actually see it is available and it's on screen. But if I drag it out and have the layer, so it's outside on the screen, I can see it. You can see history as well as the layer part layer here and history here. So let's close it for now because I don't really need it. And before I forget, forgot, forget, uh, on this part you can actually have a new layer, a new workflow and if you place it here you can work on both of them. So this is one and this is two. Or you can place it back next to each other and just switch between them or you can add it down here if you want. So it's very useful but ju just remember you're switching between different layers and different canvases so just <laughs> just make sure you you know on which one you want to work. Okay don't save. Let's delete. Delete these layers as well. Okay, so moving on, next to the navigator, we actually have something called a sub view. And here you can actually import whatever drawing you want to look at just as a reference or just open it in new canvas if you need to. And this basically works the same as the, the navigator. You can zoom in and out or rotate it or it's, uh, it's useful if you want to look at reference photos. So for now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna delete this one because I'm not using it. And I can find it here again if I need to. Let's see where it was. Sub view here. Good. Okay, so next to the sub view, we have something called item bank, which I don't really know what it does, but apparently you can import uh, different images. And next to it, we have the information, and this just shows you uh, where on the pixels, <laughs> where your mouse is on the canvas. And if you press Ctrl R, you can actually see, see it here as well. So in case you need something very specific, like where you should add a font with uh, how many pixels on the page you can actually use this or just go around and see the information part. Uh, let's close it, Control R again. Okay, so I think we've covered the main points here. We're going to skip this part for a bit and just uh, jump directly to the layer part. So here you will notice we already have a paper and we can't really do much on it. It's more or less locked. And uh, that is because the program wants to make sure you're not going to draw on it. So if you want to save it as a PNG with a transparent layer, you can because you're already drawn on this one. So what we need to do is to make a new layer here. So if we hide this one, this is the new layer. And if we want to save this one, if we draw something and save it as a PNG, it's even if we have this activated, it will still read the first layer as a PNG, so you don't need to worry about that. This, if you want, you can consider it as being a table. You have it there and you can't, you know, draw anything on it. It's just there, so you won't work like this because all these tiny squares are very distracting. So in case you don't want this at all, Let's delete this one. You will notice you can't delete it as it is because 
the canvas doesn't know what to add in its place so you can make a new layer and you select this one and you can actually delete it truthfully we don't really need it if we go to new layer this is basically the same layer we just deleted so if we don't want it we make a new layer and it's we can actually draw on it it's not locked as it was before don't say okay let's just control z undo everything just so we have as before just just remember you can't really use this layer it's by default locked okay so here we have a new raster layer and next to it we have a vector layer and the difference is this tiny cube and also if we go on the raster layer and let's just make a line a line and if we go here on the vector layer and make a line uh, let's do another color okay this line cannot be edited but this one can if we go down here we can actually correct this line if we want to so this only works on the vector layer this one will not work on the raster layer because it doesn't have vector so it can't read so it's useful if you have a different workflow and you want to use the raster layers and uh, up up here in the control room you can i think do other things with it <laughs> now i'm not really using this one but you you have to test it out and see which one you like Truthfully, I'm not using it very much, but that's just because I have a different workflow. Up uh, in this part and this one, you can actually add points if you want to or delete them and just... It's a bit of a tedious type of work. I don't think it's the same as working in a vector program. It just kind of imitates that part. So I I'm not sure if you can fully make logos with just the vector layer. But I might be wrong. Again, this is a complex program and it can probably adapt to any type of workflow you need. So I'm going to delete this one and this one. How about the deletion process? Let's, uh, let's make a few layers and let's uh, do some lines. Now, if you, if you just press delete on the keyboard, it will just delete what's on the specific layer. But if you want to get rid of this layer altogether, you press the delete layer and now we have fewer. Also, if you want to rename it, you can just double click it and rename however you want. <laughs> okay. So next to the new raster layer, new vector layer, we have folders. So in case you want to be more organized, you can just make how many folders you want to and just drag and drop whatever layer you need into the folder the same with renaming just double click and just uh, let's call it folder one you can actually have more folders within folders i don't think there's a limitation i know in photoshop you can have a maximum of 10 folders within folders i i don't think i've seen any limitation in clip studio paint but this this is just something it's good to know i guess and layers you can just move them around wherever you want and if you want to be a bit more organized or if you feel the need to up here you can actually change the color of the whole folder or just on the layer and this way you can have an easier fi time finding them. Now for me it's a bit heavy on the eye so I'm not really using them. So I just select everything and just go to no color. Again everyone has a different workflow so you can you know find your own style. I'm going to delete all of this and um, let's move on I guess. I guess it's not too late to mention, just think of layers as being transparent uh, files on top of each other. So this is layer 1, this is layer 2, this is layer 3. Let's go with that. So 
would be one, two, three, one, two, three. No, the thing is, if on the top layer, which is this part, the very first one, you have an object that occupies most of the things of the canvas, <laughs> and then underneath it, you have a smaller object, you won't be able to see it because this is where we're looking at. So, for example, on the top layer, let's uh, let's make a big dot. And on the bottom layer, we're going to have a small dot. Now, you won't see it because it's underneath it. So, you would either need to move it around in order to see it, or you can just drag and drop the layer to be on top of the other one. So it's a, it's an easy way to organize your files like this. Let's delete all of them. Okay, so one more thing about layers. Let's uh, pretend you have uh, four or five, like many, many layers. And then each, um, each of them you drawn something. and one more now the thing is sometimes you want to really see what's happening here sometimes if you don't rename the layers you will have many more and you don't know that I hey, look I, I want this orange and I need to go through all of the layers just to find it if you go here on operation this is mainly used for animation for down here I mean I actually use it for that you can probably switch it around depending on the workflow you're doing but you can actually click on the canvas and it will take you to the actual layer so you can see it jumping around and it's similar to this one if I don't really know what the layer is I can just use object or select and just click on the object to move around them okay let's delete this okay a few more things about layers so let's make a new one and let's um let's make another dot yes. okay if i make a new layer i will draw over it but if i want to read it as the previous layer i can just clip it so if i clip it basically i will not work outside the lines that i've clipped on it you can actually do and undo that so this is useful if you have an object and you just want to add all shades and colors and everything you can actually have multiple layers clipped to one another so just select each and every one and press shift and just clip it okay. this is similar to Let's have another dot and uh, I want to draw, let's delete this one because it's empty. I want to draw on this dot, but I don't want to have any clipped layers to it. I can just lock the transparent pixels. So if I do that, I can draw within the lines and not go outside the lines. But the difference between this the clipped part is that if I use the eraser on this one I can use the eraser but if I use the eraser on this one I would actually erase parts of what I've locked here so it's different methods similar but different depending on the workflow you want to achieve and also if I'm pressing this one, I am actually going to lock the layer fully, so I cannot draw on it and I cannot erase anything on it. Okay, going to delete this one. Oh, I also can't delete it because it, this one is locked, so I need to unlock it. You can keep this one if you want to. I can select everything with shift and just delete everything. Also, you will notice we have two buttons here. I'm not really using them, so I don't really know <laughs> how to describe them. Basically, this is used for animation, and I think this one as well. So, if you press this one, 
it will tell the program this is a very important layer and if you make effects or any other thing you can actually refer it to this one as the main reference layer so it's i guess not necessarily to use it but in case you have too many layers too many folders it might be a useful tool i think this is the reverse so basically you just tell that this layer is just a sketch layer so you will know you you shouldn't do the line art and the colors on this layer this is just a sketch layer okay i i think that's all with the layers oh no i still have to talk about something so let's make a new layer let's make some lines and uh, let's make a mask so we're going to the selection tool you have different options including lasso tool this one which you just click on the canvas and make whatever shape you want or an ellipse or a rectangle okay. <laughs> with the selection tool you can deselect crop so this will crop the whole canvas you can invert selected area and uh, i think this is the most important here so anyway with this selection tool if you click on this one you will create the layer mask so basically if you click on this or on this you will actually just draw within the layer mask but you can see you're also drawing outside it so if you don't want it you can actually just play around it or maybe just move it to another layer or move it down so uh, layer mask can be a bit confusing so you need to get used to it depending on the workflow and what you want to do i actually prefer using the clipping mask just because the clip to layer below just because it's easier to see than this one also i feel like sometimes it's working how i want to and sometimes it doesn't so it depends you you probably just need to get a bit of getting used to it okay and I think that is all for now. Okay, never mind a few more things. So let's uh, let's have three layers and let's make different lines on each of them. Okay, and uh, another one. Okay, so let's uh, let's pretend I want to keep all of them, but I want to make them just on on one layer. So. I will select everything, just press Alt and drag them up and just right click and merge selected layers. So this way I have all of these drawings that I did on different layers on just one layer. Now you don't need to duplicate them, you can just select them and just much visible layers but that was just in case you still want to have them on separate layers you can do that let's uh, undo everything if you select them all and want to have a different option you can actually merge everything to a new layer so basically oh no it will actually use the paper as well <laughs> so you, you can see you you have everything with the paper so we don't really want that so let's do it again let's try it again okay this time it's not with the paper so this i feel like you need to hide or show the all the layers you want to merge to a new layer so for me it's easy to just select everything and just just use this one but again that's a preference so if you if you like any other option from this just test it out and see which one works better for you okay so back to layers if you have a new layer and let's say i want to clip it to this particular 
lines, <laughs> blue, blue lines. I can actually set this layer to have a different mode. So let's set it to multiply and let's um, add a darker color. Let's go to the bucket fill. Now here I made the whole layer in a color and now it's on multiply. This is on normal, this is on multiply. So basically, and uh, you have the op opacity here. So basically you can add many effects to one layer. You can actually just use this layer. You don't need to clip it and just make it a different color. You can see if I add it to color, now you can see a different tone to what's beneath it. If I hide this one, you can see it. But if I select this and place it on another effect, you can you can play around and see which one works best for anything you want to do. So either use a layer and select a mode, either just make a new layer and use the clipping part to make a new mode, <laughs> a new layer mode. Th this is really up to you. It's part of preferences. Let's delete all of this. Okay. Okay. So a few more things to talk about. I, I know it's a lot to take in, but don't worry, this will come with practice. So I'm just going to show you all the interesting gimmicks I've seen and I've used up until now, but don't, don't need to remember each and every one of them. Just, just try and create your own workflow and see which one you want to use and which one you don't. Okay. So let's, um, Let's make a new layer again and mm, let's make a lighter line actually. Okay. And here is the layer. I can actually go to the effects, to the layer properties and just choose a border effect and change. Currently is white. You can't see it because of the paper. So let's change it to maybe like a line art. And you can also thicken or um, have lighter <laughs> line art. So this, this uh, layer already has an effect on it. So if I am to draw it again or to draw on it again, it, it will actually continue reading the effect I've already added. And this is really good. If, uh, you know, to test it out, if you want to make different objects or anything like that. If I uh, don't want this layer to have this effect again, what I've noticed in my case or what I use is I usually make a new layer, just select both of them and um, I merge selected layers. So this one, you can see it doesn't have the effect present on it. But if I want to, now I can maybe add a different line effect, so a different color. We'll, we'll continue reading it. So now if I go and make other lines, it will continue to have the last effect. Now, what I would recommend just because you don't want many layers with too many effects on it and maybe just get a bit confused, I will undo part of it. Nope. Undo again. Okay until I, uh, I have this effect with the black line art. Okay. So what I will do now is just press alt and just duplicate this file. I will hide the other one. I will actually merge this one. So just merge selected and I will be like a uh, layer with border effect. layer without border effect. Something like this. So this way, in case you want to edit this one, you can actually draw more lines on it. And this one, even if you draw lines, it will not have any effect on it. So it depends on the workflow you want to do. However, if I already merged this one with the lines here, I can actually add another type of colors. So. I can make 
different look. And if I duplicate this again, I can I can merge it. So merge everything and I can add another color <laughs> and so on. You you can literally do anything you want to. And if I draw again, you will see I am drawing with the effect on. So preferences and you know deciding on your own workflow. This you just need to test it out and see which one you like more. Okay, uh, on this note, let's delete everything again. Let's make a new layer and uh, let's try it again. So here you have border effects and you have also extra things you can try it out. So. you can do and undo or even add patterns to it you have to zoom in <laughs> okay so at this point just play around and uh, i guess just have fun with it because there, there are a lot of things you can actually do with it here in the last one you can actually combine two colors if you want to so Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to delete this one and just go back. Okay, okay just briefly, let's go to the next. Uh, I haven't used this one. <laughs> I think it's for animation as well. Uh, this is for animation and this actually helps with aligning everything. So let's, let's say I have different objects so I have one object here one object here one object here and one object here I can actually select all the layers and just align everything the way I need I guess <laughs> this is also something to play around with and see which one you like and which one you don't and also different effects and patterns you can use <laughs> okay i i actually use this only if i have many game objects and i i need them to stay in a certain line or place okay let's delete this one okay so now let's um uh, let's make a new layer some lines and just go up to the screen so you have a button here called filter and here you have many effects and things that you can try out this is something you can play around with you don't need to remember what each and everyone does you can just test it out so for example i'm gonna press blur and well nothing is happening until you you zoom in and you can see some blurry outline is happening so okay if i go to a stronger blur or if i go to gaussian blur i can actually choose the strength i want it to be okay so the same if if i want a motion blur and if i zoom out i can change the <laughs> the angle and anything i need so just play around no no need to know them <laughs> From start to finish, you can just test it out and see which one works for the particular work you, you're doing at that moment. You also have some other effects like <laughs> pixel or, or even sharpening the line. If it might not do anything right now, but it can do on other, uh, other times. Okay, it is sharpening a bit. Okay, it's adding extra pixels, so it will look sharp. Again, just play around if you want to. You have many effects. I, well, I only use a bunch of them. I don't really use all of them. 
Okay, so let's do another layer and let's just draw something. So I was talking about this uh, selection tool. So you can actually do many things with it. So if I go to rectangle and I press shift, I will actually have a perfect square. If I don't press shift, I can actually make whatever shape I want. So that is one thing to use it. Same with the ellipse. If I just make an ellipse, I can make whatever circle shape I want. If I press the shift keyboard, I can actually just make a perfect round circle. So let's, let's try this. If I want to copy this selection to another layer, I can just co press Ctrl C and Ctrl V. So this way I actually copied that selection, but it will still remain on the original layer I had. So if I actually want to crop this layer, I would do the selection again. And I will press Ctrl X and Ctrl V. So this way I actually cropped from the previous layer. So now there's a way around it if you don't want to remember Ctrl C, Ctrl V or Ctrl X, Ctrl V. Let's uh, undo this. Okay, you can actually use the selection and uh, let's copy the layer, let's hide the previous layer and just invert selected area and just press delete. So now I basically did the same thing as Ctrl C, Ctrl V and while I have this selected I can actually go to the previous layer and just invert selected again. So this is inverted in interior and this is the exterior because you can see the uh, lines outside it so i just want to delete this part and i'm just gonna press delete so now i have both layers in similar with ctrl x and ctrl v <laughs> the same tools work the same just uh, just remember to actually always stay on the layer that you want to stay. For example, if I press Ctrl C and Ctrl V now, even if the selection was on, I only copied this part because I was actually on this layer, this layer. So just, uh, just be aware that if you actually want to crop other layers or most of the layers you can actually just select them all and just merge it merge selected layers and just delete part of it and if you don't want to do that so i'm just ctrl z everything if you just just want to delete one part or the other just switch between layers so for example maybe i just want this layer be deleted and the other one even if it was selected it's uh, it's still there <laughs> and I can if this selection is still present I can still go around and maybe just delete other things so this is also a fun to, tool to use so just uh, play around with it also you can notice this extra panel so this one what it does it's let's say i am using this selective part and i also want to use an ellipse so i would press on it and if i have this one activated and i will make a new selection it will the other one will disappear so i will press ctrl z and i will want to press this one so if i press this one it will actually merge with the previous selected layers and if I don't want this one, let's go to rectangle. <laughs> you can do it each and every one of them. Let's just delete parts of it. So now if I go to another layer and just 
oops yeah it was on white color and just fill up the form now i can actually play with forms as well so this is what all of these do and in case you want i haven't talked about this one so let's say i want this selection and uh, i want to add this one and maybe this one if i press this one i can actually uh, delete everything that i've done and just um, crop it i guess i guess that's the word so let's try it again i have a circle and here i'm cropping parts of it so if i go to fill this is what it's going to fill so just be aware you can actually play around with this ones as well Okay, so every time I think I'm done talking about uh, a tool, I, I remember, wait, there's something more. So if you go back to a rectangle or a ellipse or a lasso or any other of these things and uh, make a selection, let's go on new layer just uh, because here you have, uh, as what I've talked before, this select crop, this is going to crop the canvas, you can invert selected area and a few more things that I don't really use, but if you are uh, including the fill button, so you can actually do that if you want. But if you go here to Newton, you can actually add a pattern. So you can make uh, larger dots or smaller dots. So or even other shapes. <laughs> Let, let's make a cat. <laughs> okay, and a really small one. So I think, yeah, let's go with that. So here you actually have a pattern and you have many effects here. So the layer mask that I was talking about and other things you can change around. So uh if you like this pattern and you don't want to um, edit it anymore let's go with that just make a new layer uh control select with the empty layer and just merge selected layers so this way you actually created your pattern a whole new pattern that you can use for different backgrounds or effects or any other things so now I think I'm done with it, so I'm going to delete uh, all of this. Okay, so on this topic, let's make a new layer and let's just... Uh, oops, make two colors, one and two on the same layer. We can use the selection tool, the auto select tool, and we can actually select uh, one color or the other or both. If we go to this panel again the it's the same panel as we used before here and this part is the same as before so you can actually just select one and do ctrl x and ctrl v and just have them separate on separate layers just be mindful that you might have to repair some things so it's not as accurate because it's just selecting based on colors so you you will have to work with it and see if it's something that you like to do and on this note let's pretend we have something that looks like a line art and we have a small gap here here <laughs> so if we, we use this selection tool we can actually play around with this gap so here it's not closing the gap but if I go here I actually have the gap closed so it's a bit easier and fun to use that that depends again it depends on the workflow what you want to achieve and everything else like that so let's go back and delete everything and the last one, in, in this is just a color pick, so I, I don't think it's <laughs> that interesting to talk about. If you have many colors, you can just use the color pick and just pick the colors you want to. And then the color aspect, because we haven't talked about it and I think it's a good time. Here you have the main color, 
and here you have the secondary color color <laughs> you can actually switch between the two of them by just pressing x so x x x so. and you can select one or the other and just change them so this is an easy tool to just switch between colors if you want to Oh, so until um, I forget, this is color one, this is color two, and this is actually the eraser, so you can just go around and erase it to nothingness. <laughs> I'm going to delete this one. Okay, so I said this one is an eraser, but it's actually different than this eraser where you have different types of brushes for the eraser. If you actually go to a brush or uh, let's say a pencil, okay, you see this one has different effect and texture. So if I actually go here, press the other colors, I'm still using the pencil effects. And if I go here and erase it, it's still <laughs> erasing whatever I was doing on this layer, but it's erasing with whatever pen I was using before. So this is a bit different than if I just go to the eraser and just erase everything with every eraser I have here. <laughs> so you, you can actually just erase everything with a normal pen <laughs> and uh, have different effects. Okay, now I'm going to delete. Again, this is just preferences and how you get used to working to the program and how you want to use it. I just mainly use the eraser, but this is also a helpful tool if you want to erase, you know, certain pattern. Okay, so since we're on the topic of the color, this is the color wheel, as you can probably guess. And if you want a different shape, you can actually click on this one. So just Oh, I guess choose whichever you want. And up here you have other options of how to choose color from predetermined color palettes to other sets. So maybe I want a light tone, maybe I want a bright tone. You can actually make your own if you want to. Uh, the next one is a similar, just mm, uh, a new layer. Okay. Uh, how do I call it? It's gonna mix and match different colors so you can actually if you have an easier time maybe you would like to choose this one instead of this one that's again preferences and whatever type of work you want to do uh, and the last one this uh, you are actually mix and matching colors so this is basically like a traditional color palette and you can mix and match whichever you want and if you don't want any of these or you're not using them, you can just click on it, bring it outside and just delete them. So I'm going to do that just to show you how I, I see you also have different things and different color history. <laughs> so it uh, depends on the workflow you want to do. So I'm deleting each and one of them just just play around, see whichever you want. And if you want to bring them back, just go to window and just uh, choose each and every one of these you wanted to bring back. And the same, place it back if you want to. Okay, let's delete this one. Another thing with color, let's, um, let's make a new layer. Let's make this color. Now I want to change it, so I would go to edit and I would do tunnel correction. So if I click this one, I can actually make, make it brighter or darker or make it have more or less contrast. Okay. The other one in the edit is hue, saturation, luminosity. I'm also using this one a lot, so th this is basically changing the color. This is doing saturation and luminosity, okay? And 
and another one that I also recommend is color balance that uh, changes slightly the color to whichever you want other things you can try I just recommend those three because I feel like they're simple to use is maybe tone curve and I guess you have to decide if this is something you want to use I feel like it's it's a bit hard for me to use but just go go around and test it out and well each and any one of these this they're great including gradient map and I know some people use it so just just see if it's something you want to use or you want to get familiar with okay okay I have no idea what I've done to the gradient map, but I think it's up here, so let's uh, okay, let's change the colors. <laughs> okay, double click and just play around with it, <laughs> see whatever works for you. <laughs> okay. something to <laughs> discover for yourself <laughs> also all these effects and thing, things will work on the specific layer you're working around so if I do let's say three colors on this layer and make another layer and do another color and I go back to the three colors and decide to do mm, I guess brightness contrast it will only affect those three, not the other one. So keep that in mind, uh, all these effects actually affect whatever layer you're working on. So this is a way to keep yourself organized. Okay, let's delete this. And uh, one more thing. Let's, uh, let's pretend I have an apple here. Yes, this is, a, this is an apple. Let's go. Let's go with it. <laughs> okay. And everything is on just on one layer. If I go to edit, I can maybe make use of the shading assistant. So if I click on it, this is actually some type of light source and it will actually place different shadows and lights on the layer that you are working on. Please keep in mind this only works if you have a very limited amount of colors, otherwise it won't know where to add shadows and what colors to make them. So I, I think this is fun if you need a, a bit of help with maybe shadow and light. Otherwise it's, it's a bit mm, unfinished so <laughs> you might want to go back and just redraw over it. Uh, you can also have different lighting effects including I guess night or evening basically these are effects that you can use for your own drawing if you think it can help keep in mind if you you're using that you will have extra layers made especially by the program so this is the light this what is this I don't know Ah, oh, it's on multiply, okay. This is a lighter color on multiply. That's why you couldn't see it. This is also on multiply. This is a darker color. If you go around and check it. And this was the base layer that I actually did. So basically it, it added three extra effects on top of the drawing. As usual, you can just make a copy of all of these. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, right click and merge selected layers. And here you have all of them. And here you can have all of them separately if you want to. This is on screen, so this is normal. This wasn't multiply so this is normal and it was <laughs> it, it's it's a lighter color so it's light <laughs> okay 
and this was the last one so basically you have three effects made into one so let's delete this one and just because we're on the edit part of the things you can actually mm, change the image resolution so if you click on this one you can manually make it smaller or larger and it will affect the width and the height at the same time so i can just go to half the size so the whole canvas will shrink you can see it up here and if i do ctrl z i'm going back to how it, the, how it was previously and if i go to change canvas size i can actually just crop it crop it <laughs> however i want so it's not affecting both of them it only affects one so if i press ok now i have a different pixel size so ctrl z again and i think that was all about that part the rest is just what we've talked about just uh, flipping the canvas or just um, extend it or basically this <laughs> this part <laughs> okay and one more thing let's make a new layer let's uh, let's make a selection okay and uh, use the fill button okay so if i go to edit and uh, go to transform i can scale rotate and it's just the particular object i also have this button here so this one is the same as that one scale rotate okay if i press this one i can actually rotate it if i want to and i can make it smaller or larger and if by any chance i don't want to keep this shape i can just press let's see control and i can skew it around there i can make any shape i want <laughs> okay and this is this is also available if let's just say you have some lines so you can go to edit you can enlarge or make it smaller and if you press control you can uh, make a different shape so it's it's a good use also if you're using this you might get jittered lines it's it might be a bit blurry and i think if you're using a vector layer so let's let's make a line and let's use the deform you will not get that bad of a <laughs> blurry line because it, it's a vector layer so it all depends on what you want to do Yes, it's still a bit crisp. Okay. Delete. Okay, so the last part is the story. This is just going to be helpful if you have multiple pages and working on a book or a comic on a story. It's uh, basically what we've talked about this one or this one or this one. That menu is going to be helpful for any type of this pages <laughs> okay mm. ah, it's fine let's cancel it animation is the same this is also helpful if you have a new animation canvas okay the layer is basically everything we've kind of talked about here you have merge with layer below merge with invisible layer invisible layer so basically everything you right clicked here you can find here including the raster layer that was the merge layer what i was talking about so in case in case you have a vector layer and you want to rasterize it <laughs> you just go to rasterize layer so now the vector properties are gone so you have a normal layer i think i uh, haven't talked about that again many things to talk about so we're just briefly looking through all of them okay 
uh, the select part is just this and this and uh, the rest is view rotate this this ones okay let's uh, let's go to brushes i think yes i think i'm almost done so let's go to brushes so as you noticed we have many brushes here here air brushes or effect brushes and many brushes and some of them have uh, mo multiple sides or folders and each of them <laughs> if you're on this layer just remember you probably can draw on it so always have a new layer at hand so basically i would say just choose a few a few brushes that you like and just test them out and see how well you manage them because it's not only the brush that it can help you with your work it's also the canvas size because if i go and make a very small canvas let's go let's go like this the lines might might feel different than if i'm on a bigger canvas so for example if i go here to number three if I go here, number three is on already a different size, so it's larger, so the canvas is different. <laughs> so I, I would say and suggest just get used to a few brushes, two or three, and maybe switch around to canvas size and see which one feels better for you. Because you don't have to remember all of this, I actually don't really use this um, window. I prefer not to have it. I change the brush size with this and I change the opacity with this. Sometimes I don't really need to use the opacity on the brush because I'm using the opacity on the layer. So for example, I make a new layer and I decide to go with lower opacity. I have lower opacity in the brush as well. So if I go to lower opacity on the brush, just just to keep a note, let's uh, delete this one. This is a lower opacity on the brush, so if they, if you do multiple brush strokes, you will actually get one on top of each other. And if you don't want that, you go to directly to lower opacity on the canvas. So this way, you will actually have everything as being low opacity. So it's different workflows so it can work differently for different people okay so if you noticed if you click on this you can actually see the short key so it's p and this is also p <laughs> and this is b for brush and this is airbrush b so sometimes if you want to use the controls you have to press once or twice and they will switch between each other so if you don't like that i personally find it confusing what i like to do is actually to pick this one and just drag it on top no no not on top <laughs> okay i pick this one and just drag it here and i pick this one and just drag it here so now the other one has disappeared and here I have multiple folders. I'll just call them folders. The same here. If I don't want to have a different category, I would just place it up, place it up, and place it up. So now I, I have one more less. <laughs> so I have more space here. And if you want them to go back as being a, a different option, you can just drag them around there like this and now you have them where they were before let's uh let's try and go the default mode again <laughs> just so i won't uh, confuse you okay so just um i guess just play around with um, each and every brush you want to test out and see which one you like because they're a lot and they're different and some might be useful for a few and some might be useful for uh, another type of workflow and 
preferences. Here we have the blending part, so it's basically just I feel like this is an easier thing to just play around with and master it how you want to. On the other part, let's uh, let's see how we can get new brushes. So I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to go to Clip Studio. So this is Clip Studio. So here at... Uh, oops, this is because I was using my tablet. In Clip Studio Assets, let's go to Clip Studio. Clip Studio um, Official. Let's go to Official. Hmm. Okay, so now I'm the on the Clip Studio Official page. And I want to download, let's say, the default brushes. So I'm going to click on them. And I, I'll just press download. These are the default brushes that were used in a previous version. I think my version is currently the second version. Okay. And here you can see I'm actually downloading all the brushes. So I'll, uh, I'll wait a bit and get back to you. Okay, so now that the download has finished, you are probably wondering where can you find them. So we're going back to Clip Studio. Okay, so, and uh, on this panel we are going to look for something called Material Download or something like that. Oh, okay, it's here. So we click on it and we have different color palettes, monochrome, everything you probably ever downloaded and everything that's already in the program. So what uh, we've done now is just go to download and here are all the brushes from the version 1.132 okay so these are all the brushes and how this panel works like the material you're using you cannot just click on it and just draw you you're actually just drawing with the same tool you you did before this thing is separate from this thing so what you need to do Okay, you cannot do that. You're just using the same brush. Just, just a notice. What you need to do is you need to click any one of the new brushes and just drag them over here. So let's go to, hmm, let's make a, hmm, right, let, let's just stay on pencil. Okay, so I'm going to and drag this one here so now I can actually play around with this one this is a watercolor brush so it's not working on empty paper you you need to have a different color okay. and I'm going to do with this one the same and this one the same and let, let's just stay with three three of them okay and if I want all of them to have a different category here i'm just gonna click them and just drag them let's let's go under here. so this is my new brush this is the texture brush i'm going to add it here in the same category and this is the painterly blended brush so that was one two three they <laughs> They made it on different folders, so if I want it in the same folder, I'm just gonna click and drag them to the other one. So, okay, now I have one, <laughs> one layer. So I want to click this one and just rename the subtool group settings. It was a, a right click, I think. Okay, and I'm going to go with default brushes and the version. So now I know this the whole folder is with the default brushes. So I'm going to drag and drop each and every one of them. And the good thing about this, you have this thing separate from this thing, is that if you accidentally delete something from here, you can actually find it here and uh, vice versa. So if I delete something from here, I can just 
drag it uh, the other way around. Okay, just a few more. Okay, the last one. So let's say I'm going to delete this one. I something happened, you you don't have it anymore. You can actually go here and just drag it back. So it will be on the top actually, <laughs> but it's here. So just just remember this part of the program is a bit different than this one. So you can play around. Also, you can drag this one and I, let's place it up here. These are my own materials that I was using before doing the whole reset thing. And if you want, you can just make folders over folders over different um, categories and ideas. Let's delete this one. <laughs> and since I'm here, I, I actually clicked on it. Uh, I see every brush I was using here, they have a different folder for it. So if you wanted to do that, you can just let's go with this one and just place it up and just call this one a uh, past uh, pastels. Let's call it pastels. Just so you can see how you can play around with them. And then I can just add other similar folders within this folder. <laughs> but for now, I'm just going to place everything in one just because I, I I like having all of them in one, one place. I think that's the main uh, part of it. Again, everyone is working differently. So just, um, uh, I guess, have fun and just try and see what works for you. I, I sometimes try and draw in another style and sometimes it's working better and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, uh, one more thing I think I forgot to mention about brushes, any type of brushes, I'm just gonna go with uh, I just wanted to go to my G pen but I can't find it now since I was uh, playing around with them so much. Pen, okay. Pen! I will place the pen here because I am using the pen more often than any other type of brushes. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh, right. So, you know how I was talking about having layers with different options on them, like uh, multiply or screen or any other thing you can play around here? You can actually have that directly with the brushes. So. <laughs> so it was a small pause because this particular brush doesn't have that option but this one has it so for example maybe i just want it to be lighter okay let's go with multiply <laughs> okay You can actually, some brushes have multiply modes or any other thing that you can play around with. And if you can't find them, you can actually just go to window and just select sub tool details. Now this is another pop-up. I'm going to select the G pen. This, this changes on what brush you're on. Oh, let me just delete what I've done up until now. So here you can actually play around with the settings for the pen that you want to use. So you can play around with the size. You, If you click this one, you actually have a new category, category <laughs> a new window here. So basically I was actually looking for this one. This one I have all the effects that I can do on the layer one. So now that I have this one, I can actually just go, let's go this one normal and I want to go overlay. And now I have a different color. 
and I, maybe I want to multiply and now I have a different color so you can play around with it just uh, letting you know you have that option if by any chance you want to use it okay and same thing you can play around with the hardness or the the shape or any other thing <laughs> now uh, one more thing I usually do is go to dual brush and I'm going to mix this brush with let's say this brush and apply brush say <laughs> shape so now I have a different brush that is basically a mix of the two even if you can't really see them apply brush okay so in case you don't want to save anything that you've done just reset all settings to default okay so you want to lose this uh, this setting if you're not sure you can just click on this one and just duplicate it let's call it g pen 2 and here i can actually play around and if i like it or i'm not sure if i like it or not i will do save the settings and then i'll i'll have the default one and the one that i've edited out okay that again this is the subtool details you can't find it any other way i also a small thing you can notice I'll, I'll go with that is that every type of pen you have a different type of selection <laughs> uh, or ending or, or uh, how do i call it a bit of a different pen so like this one let's zoom in this one has very straight lines <laughs> this was this was with the mouse okay but if i go here i have a softer edge and if I go here, I have an even softer edge. And if I go here, I have an even softer edge. So you can probably see the difference. Let's delete it. And uh, most, I guess most of the pens have that option. And if you can't have it here, you can probably go to Window, Subtool Detail, and uh, somewhere around here. <laughs> you okay this one you need to click this one so again if you liked it you can save settings if you don't just reset them okay and uh, any other thing you can find here and you can't find on different brushes you can probably just go to subtool detail and just edit them here now there are a lot a lot of them and i don't know all of them and some work well and some don't so this is where you go around and play with with all the options and just make the brushes your own okay that was mainly all i can think about the brushes let's delete it oops the eraser is kind of the same thing you have the same option as the brushes you can actually go to the brushes and make an eraser from the brush with the subtool detail just kind of go back and forth to eraser and pen and see the settings they were using okay oops Okay, one more thing so I, I won't forget if um, if you can't find the material download here it might disappear I mean I, at the moment I can't find it yet you can just click on the tiny arrow and just go to all the materials and just you know play around with the rest of the items here either way if you're playing around with brushes moving them from left to right and vice versa and <laughs> let, let's just say you have a crash you you don't have the electricity or something like that just remember to always close the program and open it again otherwise if you have that kind of crash it will go back to the default so basically whatever you've done moving left to right it will not um, 
red. You need to close the program so it has time to update every changes you make and then if you click on it again you will go back to how, how it was before. I just thought I should say that just because I was working on um, arranging everything left to right and all of that and I, uh, I actually had a program crash or a PC crash or some kind of crash and I had to redo, redo everything uh, again. So that, that was um, very fun. Okay, let's, uh, let's go back. Ooh. Okay, this one. Okay, so I want to say I'm almost done and I'm kind of almost done, but we still have a few points to go through. So uh, we've talked about this, 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 this. Okay, so we actually have just uh, a few more like make a new layer and use the bucket tool and well that's all it is to it use the gradient so you just select if you want transparent or not you can have different gradients just uh, play around see <laughs> whichever you want if you just want to have a selection and have the gradient set there it can actually do that so yeah, well, it's a bit simple, just just play around with it, see if you like them. Okay, I'm going to delete this one. Now, this are new layer. Well, basically straight lines, so you can do straight lines, you can do pixel lines, you can do a bit of a blurry line if you want to. You can use this one as well. So, it's good if you want to work on maybe line art. This one the same, and uh, here I'm using these ones a lot. You can actually have a full one, and you can actually have one color or the other together. So something like that. Okay. You can have the roundness of corners if you want, and you can also. Mm, where was it? Okay, the, the outline if you want it larger or smaller. <laughs> okay, so either way, just play around with these tools if you want to. There's not much to talk about now. Uh, this is for if you're making comics or manga. So let's do a rectangle. <laughs> let's do a shape, okay? So here, it's the same thing we've talked about mask it's just i guess maybe a bit more well configured than what i did so if by any chance i want to draw something here i will not go over the line so it's it's really good if you actually are working on any type of manga or comic or something like that you can actually draw in panel and not going outside outside of the lines and here, I think you've noticed it's more or less three things in a folder and other three things in a folder. So for example, if I want, I can move the folder around just by the folder, <laughs> just, just click on the folder. And if I want to add many colors, just between this one that's considered a paper and this one that's considered a layer mask, just make other layers. So you can you can draw whatever you want, and you know it, it's pretty neat. I I do like it. If I'm ever going to make a manga or a comic, I will definitely use this option. Okay, so I think that was it. Oh, I, I mean, I haven't talked about it, but you can actually just cut and divide the thingy if you want to. So it's basically the same thing. Just uh, the same as the brushes when you have different folders. It's, it's the same thing. Okay, let's... Uh, Oh, delete all of them. 
Okay. Okay. And let's uh, move to the ruler. Okay, so the ruler, what it does, it's basically making lines and you can... Oh, oops. Oh, okay, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Just make a new layer, okay. Make a new layer and do lines or curves if you want to. Or any other shape. <laughs> okay, so now if I go to a pen, any pen, I can actually make straight lines based on the ruler. So this is really neat. I can actually go outside the lines, but if I really want to, I it will snap to the line. So it's it's very useful. Okay. Let's fill it. Let's make a new layer. Uh, it, it's the same with the other ones. The one I use most is well, perspective ruler is basically quite good to use if it's very um how do i say it fast to use so once i have this one i can go and basically make perspective lines and that is my vanishing point point so uh, i would also use this oh uh, you you can also make straight lines so just be aware that it will go where you move the pen tablet or the mouse. So you can have straight lines and straight horizontal lines and straight vertical lines. Okay, so you you can play around with the perspective ruler as well. And the other thing uh, for the ruler, I use the symmetrical ruler. So this is this is quite interesting because you make a line. You can see the layer has a grid activated, so a ruler activated. So now, if I draw, I can actually make something symmetrical. So this is what the symmetry ruler does. So if I don't want this one, I can actually delete the whole layer. Or if I um, if I have a ruler and I maybe want to make a symmetrical ruler. I want to make many lines. Uh, I think uh, the max is 16. So I'm gonna make a line. And now I can do this. So basically it's really good if you're doing any decorative design or mandala. And if you, let's say, you want this layer as it is and you don't want it to have this ruler you can actually click on it and drag it on a lower layer so now if i draw it will not have this effect on it and if i draw here i can have more effects so yes that that's the thing also with the symmetry ruler if you have line symmetry so Let's make one here. This is the line symmetry. And on the same page, on the same layer, you can actually make another symmetrical ruler. So let's uh, not uh, have that one activated. So now if I make another one, <laughs> you, you will see the lines are, I guess, not symmetrical. <laughs> Um, they don't have symmetry so you can use this tool and make many many designs so I'm going to delete them okay okay and the last part is just the text the font I can write anything here and it will turn into a font now you can see this has an effect on it <laughs> I, I mean it, it's a font if you don't want it to, uh, to how, how they say it, to leave it open to edit it, you can actually just make a new layer and just rasterize it. So if I rasterize this, now it's just a, a normal raster layer. But if I don't, I can just leave it like that. 
or I can merge it to another layer that was my first intent and here in the font area you can choose any type of font clip studio paint already has or you can actually download other fonts and save them to windows fonts and it will appear here in the program so I I have many <laughs> okay and, and as usual just the normal edit text part you can do and there ev everything is here okay and the last part is just the bubbles this is good for comic or manga or any webtoon and uh, I haven't used them <laughs> but they're basically uh, I think you can figure them out I, they, they should be easy to figure them out okay let's uh, delete this Okay, and now we're almost done. I just have one more thing to share with you. It's uh, the auto action thingy. So what this does, it's basically, it's re reading every move you've made and just save it as an auto action. So if you click on it, you can actually do the same effects on a different object. So let's see. Okay, so I'm no expert, but I guess let's uh, let's give it a try. <laughs> so I'm going back to layer. I'm making a new layer, and let's just um, make a circle. Okay, and another one with a different color, and another one just uh, just let's let's make a shape, I guess. okay let's uh, <laughs> let's pretend this is something okay so i'm going to auto action and just make a i think it was the default one i tried to make a few but they didn't work so let's <laughs> let's try anymore <laughs> so create a new auto action okay and i'm going to press record so now this is going to record everything i'm doing on this layer so for example let's uh, let's say i want i want um, a level correction so i'm going to adjust this press ok this is going to be saved as an action that i did to this layer so now maybe i want to skew a bit so i'm going to do that so i'm going to press ok and this is going to calculate the pixels that i've used and now maybe I want to, um, I guess, use the brightness or contrast. Let's go with that. And I also want to add, um, let, let's go with, make it more cyan. Okay. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's pretend I'm done with this. I can also use different filters. So let's, let's go with a motion blur and just uh, just just add it just, just a little okay in uh, in one direction uh, I mean let's go backwards okay <laughs> okay so uh, after I'm done with this layer and I I think it's okay I'm just gonna stop recording okay so now I'm going to make another layer and make another shape let's uh, It, it's okay. <laughs> Let's go with this. Okay. And I want this one to have the same effects on this layer. So I have this layer selected. I'm going to auto action and I'm just gonna, you, you can just play one of it if you want to, but I'm just going to play the whole folder. So I'm click on, clicking here and press play. And uh, well, I guess it did the same thing, so it's working. <laughs> I say I'm not an expert because I was trying to duplicate the same layer and add different effects and it just didn't work. So I would recommend maybe just play with it if you want to or just go to Clip Studio Asset Store and just find a very, very good auto actions that others have done. So you you can probably play around with the defaults as well. So I think that was all.
I think that was all I wanted to cover. Uh, the truth be told, I, I feel like we've just scratched the surface. I don't think I even show you maybe 50% on, of what the program can do. So it's basically just the main items that I use and you would probably want to use. Of course, you should learn more if you want to. I, I always, every year I learn something new about the program and there are a lot of updates. So just, uh, I guess, just know a bit of the basics and just try and discover your own workflow that you would want to do. As usual, just go back to Windows if you want other uh, things to do. For example, I have history and if you want to go back in time, <laughs> you can uh, you can actually find them. So I'm not using this one. I'm just using uh, undo and redo. But if you think it would be useful for your type of workflow, just uh, just try them all now you you can break the program so just try and do everything you want or discover things on your own and if something doesn't look okay or it's broken just <laughs> go back to the default settings and you're going to be fine okay i think that's all this video is way way too long i hope it was helpful and uh, i guess i'll see you in the next one bye bye